Greetings, known world. I am Excellency Ramut Al Taiba coming to you out of the barony of Bronzehelm in the amazing kingdom of Artemisia. Joining me today to talk along our road to retention is Sir Alexander from another amazing kingdom, the kingdom of Outlands. <laughs> Sir Alexander, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Sir Alexander. Um, just a little bit about me as far as my SCA pass. I started the SCA in about 1991. Uh, my first office was the Hospitaller or Chatelaine back then. So I was the Hospitaller for about three years. Um, was able to get us in the local newspaper, on the local television. Um, I was knighted in 1997. Um, so I took the path of the warrior. Um, I've been a baron of Unserhofen, which is Fort Collins, Loveland, Northern Colorado area. Um, I'm also a Pelican in the SCA, and I am currently the Kingdom Chatelaine for the Kingdom of the Outlands. So I've been in the SCA for quite a while, and really my passion has always been um, new people, growing the SCA, keeping people in the SCA, and doing all of that, and, and um, finding new ways to do it better, for sure. Um, let me introduce and, myself to as far as my mundane self also. Definitely. Uh, we do need to just go ahead and disclose that the views and opinions that are expressed on the show are those of the participants on the show and do not reflect any official policy or position of SCA because, you know, as a kingdom officer, you, you don't want to say something and have it being reflected necessarily on the kingdom and the SCA. However, it is your own personal opinion. Right. Um, <laughs> so... Let's see, I joined the SCA in 91. In 1994, 95, I became a professional swing dancer. So, which is a crazy job. And it was really SCA people that helped um, start that. So I would go take lessons, bring it home, teach my household at the time. So I learned how to lead and follow, um, but then created a troupe. Um, we danced professionally, we taught lessons, we ran big events. Our biggest battle of the big bands, we had 750 people at. And I say that to because that was all about recruiting and training mm -hmm. people. And I would take stuff from the SCA and use that in swing dancing. And then I would take stuff that we learned in swing and use it in the SCA. So it was a really great symbiotic relationship. I eventually went back to school and got my bachelor's in communication studies. So it was all about relational communication, conflict resolution, that sort of thing. Went on and got my master's in education. So my focus was on communication. And then I became a communication teacher at a community college. So nice. I've taught for the last 10 years and community college really is still all about how do you keep students in school? How do you retain them? Um, how do you help them on their journey? all of those sort of things. And so I just moved positions in December. So now I'm a student success coach. So really we give people money and help, and I'm the guide that helps keep them in school. So I um, give them the motivation and all the things they need, need so that they can um, be retained and mm -hmm. actually get through school. So, right. um, and along that path, as a teacher, I also worked at a couple of different other places. So I worked for a year as an engagement specialist at a Unitarian church. So that was eye opening to see the spiritual community and how they keep track of folks and retain them. And then I was also a program director for a nonprofit. And that was one of my main things was to help recruit and grow mm -hmm. uh, members of that group. So almost everything that I've done in my life, in, whether it's in the SCA or professionally, has been all about um, recruitment, retention, orienting people to things, um, re-engaging people, um, all of the above. And I and I use things, it's great in the SCA because I get to use things there and then bring them into my professional life and vice versa. So well, and it's it's handy to be able to have those different experiences and draw from them, each of them, and kind of come up with an amalgam of what really is the the most beneficial for each different, you know activity because yeah. what works for one may not work for the other but a piece of what works for the other might click with what worked for you know college versus sda versus nonprofit versus you know an engagement you know 
public exactly. speaking. I mean, you can really draw on all those different experiences for a nice holistic approach to retention and recruiting. Yeah, and, and the process that I created out of all of these things I call story bonding, and so we'll go into that a little bit tonight. Um, but it is from pulling from all of these different areas of my life as far as how do we get people in and then how do we retain them? You know, how do we keep that, that energy and fire going as, as an organization? So, Well, let's just dive right into story bonding because I've got to tell our audience that I am extremely excited and passionate to hear you explain this to them because it is so it's such a modern way to address recruitment and retention and engagement to keep people really intertwined and feel integral to what's going on. So if you would like to go ahead and take it away, Sir Alexander. Yeah. So um, while I was teaching and then working at the Unitarian church as their engagement person, which was really eye-opening to go, oh, wait, these organizations keep track of their members. What? They have databases where they have membership and they, you can send, what? You know, like we haven't been doing any of this in the SCA. We're just like, check our website, find us on Facebook. So it was really eye opening. But it also gave me a time to be able to read some books and, like you said, pull some things together. Um, so one of the books that I read was Story Branding, which I really, I really liked his concept. He uses the hero's journey. Um, as one of his things, but it seemed like that cut short if it's just marketing and you, you're you doing these cool things and then people get to your group and they're like, well, this is nothing like how they were marketing, right? So then I read this other book and it was called Simple Church and it was all about what are you transforming your members into? So like you said, you know, I took my experiences and I took these books and I put them together into what I call story bonding. And really the overarching question in story bonding is what is the story you're inviting your participants into, right? So your, your organization isn't the hero, your participants are the heroes, right? So um, a lot of businesses, you'll see their websites and they'll talk about themselves and we do this and that, that. but instead of going, hey, you're the hero and we wanna invite you into this exciting thing, right? And the SCA is perfect. I like to say the SCA is in the hero business, right? Like, oh, definitely. I mean, what a great, we have adventures and we do all these things, um, but really shifting the focus, especially to our newer people and then people going through the process, right? Um, so yeah, what is the story that we're inviting our, um, our people into? And so they're really, you're using the idea of story, the hero's journey, which is the oldest, you know, art that we do as far as um, we use it for movies. Uh, we're pulling people in using story. Mm -hmm. um, well, and we talked before the show, like for people who play video games, we don't play a video game just because it's, you know, got great graphics or we like the mechanics of the game. You, you get drawn in by the story. That's what mm -hmm. it keeps you going. If it has, you know, a great intro it has a great story to begin with, but then the story peters out at, after, you know, a couple hours of gameplay, done. I don't want to play it anymore. Right. Yeah. So video games, books, movies, all those things that, you know, make millions of dollars and the SCA, um, people see the SCA and all of a sudden, you know, they get to kind of escape and go do this thing, have a different name, um, kind of almost recreate themselves in a way. Um, yeah, and, and enter into this, to this journey. So that's the big question. What are we inviting our participants into? And so then there's six different steps that we can use to create a, a story bonding script, which can help guide us. Um, thank you, perfect. Um, so we have the hero who is searching for, so figuring out what they're searching for, uh, meets a guide, somebody that'll help them, who invites them on a journey where they will grow and be transformed into. So by using this, you create basically a, a story bonding script. So you figure out for our organization, what are each of these parts, right? I usually like to start backwards. And I think this is an important piece to ask in the SCA is what are we transforming our heroes into, right? Like, so mm -hmm. when we have new people coming in, what is it? What's our goal? 
Because the whole point of this is to align your organization so that you're achieving these things, right? So it isn't just hoping and waiting. You're actually creating all of your activities to help people grow and transform. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to figure that out. So just as an example, um, we as Chatelaines in the Kingdom of the Outlands, um, really led by Lord Ilo, uh, who's a deputy Chatelaine, instead of having the same old um, newcomer's handbook that has a bunch of information, that has a bunch of words that the newcomers don't understand, we decided to do a quest book. So we said, what are all the things that we want a first year member in the SCA to be able to do, right? Um, that will real, re what does a Lord or lady in the SCA look like? So we wrote down, well, they should, you know, go to all these places and they should attend all these things and they should know these people and, and get introduced. Mm -hmm. And so then what we did is we created a newcomer's handbook or a newcomer's quest book. Mm -hmm. So basically we're not pushing information on them. They're the heroes. So they're going to use that to go through, meet people, add to the book, right. And grow into that that lord or lady in the SCA. So that's one example. A second example is, so obviously we have peers in the SCA. So um, as a knight, we just, I asked that same question. So what does it mean to be a knight? But not just what does it mean, but what's the job of a knight? Mm -hmm. So if we're transforming people, right? So starting number six into knights, um, what does that look like even so that we know where we're going, right? Instead of just this like random, oh, they, they fight okay. Do they have peer like qualities? Um, and so we wrote this document with several mm -hmm. knights in the Outlands and we call it On Knighthood. And basically it tells you, here's the job of a knight. And really that came out of, I had a friend who was knighted and he would go to fighter practice. Um, and like many knights, they get knighted and then they're like, well, I don't know what, right? So They've been this hero on this journey and then they get to that final transformation phase. And then they're like, well, I don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. Right. Um, so part of it was that, and it really, it was mm -hmm. saying, well, it's not your job to be the hero anymore. Right. Mm -hmm. Now it's your job to be the guide. Mm -hmm. So you don't go to fighter practice and just beat everybody and go, Oh, well, I don't need to go to fighter practice. That's not your job anymore. Right it's not your job to fight in 10 crowns because you still think you're the hero, right? Like it is your job to be Obi-Wan Kenobi, right? Yeah, and the quest giver in the, in the game. game. Right. Yeah. I mean, every, every um, show has it, right? Every, every show has a Gandalf, right? Like you're, it's your job to now train and mentor and grow that next generation, right? Um, which is a different feel. It's a different job um, than than getting to be that hero. So um, we did on knighthood, and for people who were coming up the ranks, they had never seen anything like it. You know, it really gave them some focus on where to go. And it's not a checklist like it no. Checklist. It's just um, here's some ideas of what a knight does, right? Um, well, it's kind of a, a better definition than saying you know. The title is night. These are the pure light qualities that you should have. Like to a person who doesn't know our jargon, being told that you kind of, it's it's very nebulous. You just right. don't know. But saying you know here, this is the night's journey. Like, oh, it kind of breaks down what is expected of a night, what a night actually does, and what a night is. Well, and the, and the second piece too is for knights, right? Like, mm -hmm. okay, so if this is what we're supposed to be transforming our fighters into, mm -hmm. and there isn't really much in there about fighting, right? Mm -hmm. So then we have to look at that kind of journey and go, okay, so number five, where they will grow, how do we want them to grow in all of these aspects, right? Mm -hmm. Their journey, what is the journey? Are we, is it a fighter practice or is it really about like a chivalry practice where we're teaching them all of the Things, right? Are we aligning our organization to help people go through this process? Do they have a fellowship of people that they hang out with that will help them on the way, right? Are they helping each other out? As a guide, do I know my job as a guide to be helping them through this process? Knowing what they're looking for, right? What are they searching for um, as far as the hero of the story that we can help provide as an organization? 
And then of course, really getting back to who are our heroes? Mm -hmm. So here's another example um, pre-COVID, probably a year before COVID, it was me and another fighter at, at practice who just got knighted like two weeks ago. So um, it's really great to see him go through this journey, right? Um, we're like, oh, we need to revamp, we need to restart, but let's actually use the tools, right? And the first tool that I noticed that we don't do very well is who are our heroes? Meaning that we do get a list of members, but there's a lot of people in our groups that are not on the membership role. So is anybody keeping track of any of these members, right? So, and they usually aren't. So we're just hoping that they show up. So we said, okay, we're gonna keep track of the fighters in our barony, right? So there's two of us at practice. So we just started to take attendance, get people's names when they came, um, you know, and keep track. And then I would color code on the little spreadsheet to say, hey, these people are pretty regular, yellow for folks that we need to get in contact with, red for folks that, you know, maybe they're falling out, they need more attention. And so in a year, by the end of the year, we had 40 fighters in the barony mm -hmm. that were pretty active four different units in there, raiding other groups, you know, which is a part of that story and excitement. We're raiding other groups to be a part of our group um, and having a lot of fun. Of course, then COVID hit. <laughs> so that was a bummer. But it was really nice to see this whole process in action as far mm -hmm. as like, okay, well, who are our heroes? What are they searching for? And it's a nice way to keep track of, um, you know, the, the, the individuals in your area and the individuals, you know, who maybe, maybe need somebody to reach out a little more than normal, you know, maybe they have something going on where they just need that. And if you don't yeah. keep track of it, you don't know, you don't know the person's in yellow, you don't know they're in red, they're in the danger zone, like of being disgruntled or discouraged. You don't right. know if you don't keep track of it that way. Yeah, and just reaching out and saying hello, how have you been? How's life? brought so many people back, right? So when we talk about retention and re-engagement as a guide in the SCA, as a peer, right? Um, being able to just know who to even reach out to. So keeping a list and then reaching out to folks and saying, how are you doing? We're having practice, come on out. Um, so, and then bringing those folks back, right? So definitely during COVID, you know, they're, there's COVID policies and all of that. And some people haven't been out in a couple of years. And so, but I knew who they were because I kept a list. So I reached out and said, hey, come to the park and fight. And so people we haven't seen in a couple of years have come out and participated. Um, so had, a, and they're having a really good time. And they're just thankful that somebody remembers, right? Who they are and is keeping track. But I think of that as part of the, roles of a, of a guide, right? Is you're a mentor and you're helping, yeah. but it doesn't mean you have to be a peer in the SCA, right? So no. we're helping people become, do their first year. I mean, chatelains are guides, right? So whether we're orienting them and sending them to their next place, whether we're helping them in their first year in the SCA, any of those things, they're a guide for that part. So they're also the hero of the story, but they're also playing the part of the guide and they're also being a group member for their team, right? As they go through this process. Exactly, everybody at at, at any given point in time would be multiple roles. And yeah. also by perspective too, like you could be and your perspective on your hero's journey, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you're being the guide for somebody else. You're being that quest giver for somebody else. Yeah, and I would say one of my critiques of the SCA is that sometimes we get stuck in the hero mindset, right? So um, we have a lot of shows about peers and dupes and mm -hmm. da 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 da, and who are they and what are they doing? But we have far fewer shows about the new people or the newer people in the SCA and what are they doing and what are they experience, right? And so, and really that should be, I think, more of our focus mm -hmm. is spotlighting those heroes um, and having the, the peers really take that support and guide position. So same with mm -hmm. Pelicans, right? So I'm a Pelican, not running events, but being the mentor to really grow. So as Pelicans in service, it, are we doing as many um, workshops to train people how to how to do the service? Do we have a weekly service practice, right? Or <laughs> we're like 
training people to be event coordinators and um, all the things that we do in the SC, which are really, I mean, that's a lot of work and a lot of skill, mm-hmm. but we don't treat it the same. We don't have a, no. we don't have a um, way, we don't usually have like, what do we call it? So we have like a fighting track and we have like mm-hmm. an archery track and we even have ANS stuff at events, but we really don't have a service track, right? We have, well, which, they're running which, the event, but if I'm a service person, can I go and learn more about service at an event just like anybody else? Which, for example, not to keep going back to video games, there are people who play video games because they like the fighting. And there are people who play video games because they like the crafting. And then there are people <laughs> who play the video games to sit there and farm and get right. all the supplies so that all the fighters that are playing in those games and all the artisans playing in those games right. can do all what they want to do. And right. then, yes, Sharon, you are a hundred percent correct. Those skills are huge for fringe people who haven't found their niche because people who kind of feel outside of, well, what do I do? That could be the one thing that they excel at. And until somebody helps them have that opportunity to do it, they don't know. Well, and so that's the story bonding. So, you know, I use fighting, of course, but any of the things that we do, the SCA is really mm-hmm. set up pretty well as far as like these different tracks, right? So we have the ANS. So are we figuring out what people are searching for when they come to the SCA and they want to do the arts and sciences, right? Are there guides who are helping them not just do their, their work, but really grow mm-hmm. as peer like people. So I, you know, I use that term versus peers because everybody's like, well, not everybody can be a peer, blah, 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 blah. But our goal is really for everybody in the SCA to be a noble, right? AOA level and to be peer like people, right? So yes. what does that look like? We have an AOA level, we have a GOA level, peer levels, but how do we help people become peer like? So as a guide, right, in ANS, um, what does the journey look like for those folks in the ANS, right? So are they just at home kind of doing their own thing or are we doing activities throughout the month that help them grow in all of mm-hmm. these ways beyond the ANS, right? Are we helping them, you know, transform? So, and if we do, if we are, what, what are the things we're helping them grow in, right? Do we have a list? Do we know what we're transforming our ANS folks into? Do we have a list of how we want our service people to grow? Do we know what we're transforming them into? Because otherwise we're just kind of doing it, right? Yeah. But if we don't it, have it laid out. It, it makes so much more sense to kind of have that. Like when you're watching a movie, you can kind of tell what right. the hero in a movie is doing. When you play a game, you can tell. When you're reading a book, you can tell. You know what is going to happen to the hero by looking at what they've set up to develop for themselves. It's very seldom that there's no outline at all of what's going to occur. Yeah. And even though we have awards, it doesn't have to be attached to awards Mm -hmm. at all. It just, you know, people join organizations and stay in organizations because they're growing, right? Mm -hmm. They know that they're growing and transforming and they're connected. So it isn't just the same thing every time, you know, they're, they're doing this thing. And I think in this process, it's great that we have this thing that once you do get to that that master level, whatever you're doing, that you become a guide, right? And mm-hmm. so then you're bringing in that next generation and you can start in a different area. So I could start archery, right? And then I'm starting kind of as that new novice person and going through that same process. So we have these many ways to keep people engaged, but I think we need to be intentional, a little more intentional. Like we just get used to like, okay, we're just going to do whatever we do, right? We're going to go to fighter practice and we're going to fight every week, but we're going to ignore all the other things that... And the same people people are always going to run all the same events all the time. Nobody else is ever going to do it. It's always the same people and never give anybody else a chance. Right, right. Instead of knowing, okay, this is where I'm at. Here's kind of the... And so that's the second part of story bonding is once you kind of get your story script, right? Then you, and let me just kind of read what I came up with for the SCA as a general. So historical fiction enthusiasts who love an escape from their mundane lives meet a friend or family member in the SCA who invites them to join them at events and practices in the SCA, in which they find fellowship of friends, have great adventures, grow into an artisan warrior or organizer, 
and are transformed into a Lord of the Lady of the Realm, right? So that's the basic script using those six parts. The second part of story bonding is to go, okay, let's go deeper. Where as an organization are we lacking, right? So mm -hmm. I brought that up earlier. So when I lay out the story bonding script for a lot of our SCA groups, and we look at like, who are our heroes? Mm -hmm. We don't really know who our heroes are, right? So get, then we can start to have strategies to go, oh, well, what's a better way for us to know who is our populace, right? Like mm -hmm. in the day we had a phone book <laughs> and you could call the it. The Yeah, the directories, right? And it was your whole group and you got that mm -hmm. picture and you knew everybody. Um, later, like Yahoo groups came in, but we had a database in there with everybody in there. And then we just kind of, lost it as far as now we have Facebook and some people are on there or not, but we don't have a really good sense of who's in our community, right? Mm -hmm. So going through each of those parts of the story bonding um, script and figuring out like, okay, where, where are we not doing as well? Or what can we do better? What strategies can we do better to increase this area, right? I, so I, it, it can I, be an assessment tool. And I know that in the past... In my local group, um, when I was Shailene, I did kind of a, like a networking sheet where it kind of lists all sorts of different interests. Uh, and it was like, hey, are you, do you want to learn about this subject? You know, check yes or no. Are you comfortable teaching this subject? Yes or no. So that I could kind of use that as a tool to kind of help point people in the right direction to get them to their, their, their guide or, or their mentors. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it almost it's only part of the piece of the puzzle to help right. get that going because it's not a true, it's not a true journey for each hero. It's not a way right. to determine necessarily who the heroes are exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, once we're more intentional about it, then we could say, Oh, we do have a strong archery community in our group. Mm -hmm. So what do we want that to look like? What do we want those archers to be transformed into as far as SCA people? Who are our guides and do they know what this journey looks like? Are all of our practices and events set up in a way to help grow our people so that they're not only doing archery, but maybe they're making bows and arrows and they're learning the service part of archery, running the line, being a marshal. Like, so yet once you kind of know, like, here's what we're, where we're going, right mm -hmm. now we can go back and really, align our organization to help that growth happen, right? Otherwise, we're just kind of spinning our wheels, um, doing our thing. People kind of meander their way there, right? And it's just, if they do it a lot, maybe they get there. Um, but maybe they're missing parts. Um, maybe they're really good at archery, but they don't have any of the social graces, right? Uh, maybe they don't have any of the crafting skills, all of those things that we would like to see in a well-rounded mm -hmm. archery in the SCA. So well, yes. And, and not knowing the pieces that you're missing on what right. that hero archer looks like, that really can impact that hero archer to be's kind of satisfaction within the organization, not knowing, you know. Yeah, right. And how many people in the SCA have felt that where they're like, I don't know. I don't know what they're looking for. I don't know what I'm really supposed to be doing. I'm just kind of going mm -hmm. and nobody's really guiding me. Or I have 10 different guides telling me different things, right? So, all at the same time. <laughs> all at the same time, right. Definitely. Definitely. So along with that, kind of using the story um, bonding experience, and you have kind of that hero's quest, and it and you have utilized this tool, you also have discussed um, kind of how it applies um, with the issue and retention about the the six levels of engagement mm -hmm. and how that kind of can apply to the retention aspect and recruitment. Do you want to talk a little bit about that or do you want to still yeah. stay on the story bonding? Cause well, I'm good I, with each. No, <laughs> I'm having aha good. moments here. Like yeah. I played since not often on since 92 and I'm like, Oh my God, this makes so much more sense now. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah. So I found this tool, um, you know, in all of my quests. And so, there's these different levels of engagement. So on the bottom, right, there's observing. So people observe the SCA, using the SCA as an example, but it could be anything, right? So they kind of, it's on their radar a little bit. 
Um, then they start to follow them. So maybe they sign up for their Facebook group or whatever. And then they're like, oh yeah. So now I know a little bit about the SCA. So they start endorsing the SCA. They're going, oh yeah, there's, I met these people once. They're pretty cool. Um, contributing, which is then, oh, well, I go to, I go to practices, you know, and I'm, I'm starting to be that first year person or whatever, or even they, maybe they've been in the SCA for several years, but you know, they go kind of hit and miss um, owning. So then they really identify with the SCA um, and owning their part in the SCA. They become um, officers, right? They help in that service and then leading, of course. So taking up those positions, officer positions, um, even positions in the Barony or Shire where they're helping make things happen, right? So I found this tool and I thought it was great because they had little parts where they showed, you know, when you're talking and engaging with folks, seeing where they're at and helping them move to the next level. So what I did then too is I, I did a red section. So I did like, well, what happens when people are dropping out? So let's go to the top here. So, um, ah, so the no top one was um, leading, right? So mm -hmm. I did burning, right? So when people are burning out, They've been leading, they've been a baron or baroness or a king and queen or an officer, um, and they've been in that leader position and they're starting to burn out. So then it just has like a description of what does that look like? And then also some of the things that need to happen for that person, right? So they need to start taking a break, um, you know, and they're really in there, but they really need to have time to rejuvenate and heal a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. um, if we go down the pyramid, so the next one is reminiscing. So we all know these folks. Folks that are still there, they're not really in an officer position, but they like remember the good old days. They still feel like they have ownership in the organization. They kind of show up when decisions are being made, right? So <laughs> even if they aren't one of the main decision makers, they still feel that ownership, but mm -hmm. they've disconnected, right? So how do we get them back into leadership positions? Um, the next one is recovering. So that's in the contributing. So we have recovering mm -hmm. folks. So they've been taking a break. Um, they're still connected to the organization, but maybe they've been out for a while. They had kids, right? We talked about that earlier. They've gone back to school. Mm -hmm. They've had an injury. Um, so they've been in that recovering. And, and what do we do to help them re reignite, right? What is the story mm -hmm. that we use to bring them back into the game um, and reignite them? Um, lower on the pyramid, we have reassessing. So these are folks that are like kind of questioning the SCA, the novelties worn off. Mm -hmm. um, they believe in the SCA, but their tr trust has been challenged. So mm -hmm. maybe people have been in for a year or two, right? And they're like, and then something happens and they're yeah. like, I don't know about this, right? So then what are some strategies that we can do to help these folks? And then disengaging folks. So they're, they start other hobbies. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of what I was seeing during the pandemic. Definitely disengaging and starting other hobbies, martial arts, that sort of thing, which really made me nervous as far as like, are we just going to lose these members, right? So mm -hmm. how do we reach out to those folks, right, when they're disengaging? Um, and then, of course, the lurkers, which is so funny because we have these all over the SCA. Where we do. <laughs> and, and you wonder, like, why do you comment? You just made a whole thing about how you quit 15 years ago because you were so unhappy but you're on an SCA, you know, like group discussion list, putting in your two cents. So there's still, so there's still some sort of connection there though. Mm -hmm. And I've definitely talked to folks about why do they stay in? You know, folks, I don't know, but I just kind of asked mm -hmm. them, why do they stay in? What are those things that kind of connect them to the SCA? Mm -hmm. And then starting to grow those conversations, right? What are those things that are magical to them or they really liked? How can they do that in a different way than what they've done mm -hmm. in the past? But we definitely have lurkers out there that still have some connection, but they still want to put in their two cents as far mm -hmm. as as far as the SCA. So yeah, that's a, a pyramid of engagement, which I really like to think about as far as um, Kaz, we can go back to the regular screen if you want. <laughs> um, it just is helpful to think about where people are at as far as their engagement, right? Well, um, and, and even looking at that pyramid, like my brain is going, okay, well, looking at story 
bonding, you mm -hmm. could be still on the hero's path at, at any point of that pyramid yes. of engagement. And you could go right. up and down. Like, it's not a static, hey, I've hit leader and I'm stuck at leader. You could suddenly become that lurker through a right. series of unfortunate events. It's yeah, a very it's been... fluid kind of pyramid. Yeah, and that's that's what we were talking about with the spreadsheet and the fighters, right? So people who are in the green, maybe they're going up the pyramid, right? People in mm -hmm. the yellow, maybe they're going down the pyramid, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe there's stuff going on in their lives and they're starting to either need a break or take a break or they're a little burnt out or whatever. So mm -hmm. identifying that and then being able to determine and same with the red, right? Mm -hmm. Asking folks, are you done? That's totally fine, right? We want to make sure that they leave and still think like, hey, that was a great group, but I, I'm just too busy with life or things are happening, right? But I would recommend this to other people. So still in the endorsing, right? Like I want, I want people to know it's, it's okay, but it's just, I'm too busy right now. I think that strategy when it comes to people who are on that leaving, that are on that disengaging or on that lurking, there's got to be a, a different way if that happens, which it's got to happen. Retention and churning, you know, are go hand in hand, but like, is there a way to maybe start focusing more on asking those questions? You know, mm -hmm. I understand you're, you're done and I a hundred percent support you. What do you think could have changed that experience? What could have been done better? What, you know, do you see was the problem? Mm -hmm. You know, well, and especially like an exit think, interview. Right. And catching folks, right. So allowing them to take a break, not oh, counting them, right. And so when people are, are burnt out and then they're taking a break and they're recovering, that's a great moment for us to either help them still stay connected in some way mm -hmm. and to refocus. So I have friends that have played the SCA for 40 years, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, one of my friends, he, he's a knight and he always gets a little bitter. And so that's what he brings up, right? All of those things from the past. And, and so he's always kind of on that, but he's still a little connected, right? And his wife, even though she went through those things, she shifted from fighting over to equestrian. And so mm -hmm. there's this new exciting thing and she's changed her persona. Mm -hmm. And so she's been able to like recreate her story as a hero um, and have a new trajectory, right? Mm -hmm. So um, using all of these tools of what is the story, what, who's our hero, and then how do we re-engage folks? So on that little form, that's one of the little blocks is like, here's some strategies mm -hmm. when somebody's in this mode, right? Um, here's ways to reach out or redirect, right? So mm -hmm. if somebody's just taking a break, maybe you invite them to a low key thing where they don't have to do a lot. They can show up and see old friends, right? And they go, oh, I remember this. This is so great, right? Uh, but we don't want to put them like, okay, you have to be in charge of, right? Because <laughs> well, then they're like, ah, that's too much. And I don't know if this is how you feel about it. When you're hanging out with somebody who's on that break, you're hanging out and doing something that's super low key. Don't talk about SCA. Talk right. about your life. friendship. Talk about mm -hmm. life. Talk about, you know, current events. Talk about work. Talk about anything right. but the SCA. If they're on a break, it's because they need it for their mental sanity. Right. If you said that, you remember when we were at this event, how great this was? They yeah. don't want to hear that because for them, maybe it was great for you, but it wasn't for them. And that's why they're on the break. Right. They don't need Yeah, to so that. always assessing, right, where they're at, when you see them, right? Mm -hmm. If they are coming back to an event saying, hey, it's so good to see you versus mm -hmm. where have you been, right? There's yeah. so many. We've done that so much, right? Where have you been? Yes. Um, instead of, hey, it's so great to see you. Yeah. It's hey, it's great to while. see you. I've missed you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for like, sure. You don't have to say, where have you been? It doesn't matter. They're your friend. They're a fellow SCA member. They're here now. Who right. Cares? <laughs> well, in one of your earlier interviews, I'm not sure with who, but that was one of the things that we put into on Knighthood is one of the things that we want to help people grow in is to actually be intentional about knowing that you burn out in the SCA or mm -hmm. that things, life happens, right? Like oh, if you're in the SCA for any amount of time, things happen, right? So yeah. people get married, people get divorced, people have kids, yeah. death happens, all these things happen, right? So 
if we're training our people from the beginning to know like, okay, this is going to happen. And this is one of the things you need to work on is what do you do when you're starting to feel burnout, right? What are the signs of that? Mm -hmm. And then what are the things you're going to do to take a break and then to refresh, right? And come back. Um, needs to be a part of what we do as far as the growth of the heroes in the SCA, right? Definitely. So in On Nighthood, we actually have a section about burnout, right? And being able to take care of yourself and identify when that happens. Self-care um, first. <laughs> yeah, because I think somebody mentioned if people stay in, then they start to poison the well, right? Then they start yes. to like complain and they're irritable and then they'll say stuff right in front of new people, which is not great, you know? And no. it's like, um, you need a break. So being able to identify that, and I've definitely gone through burnout several times throughout my time in the SCA. And it I feels great it. to go do other things like swing dancing and then not think about the SCA for four or six months and then come back fully refreshed. Like, oh, I did all these other fun things. Let's try them in the SCA. And, definitely. Yeah. Like there's that opportunity. Yes, our, our SCA is great experience and, and it's a hobby of hobbies. <laughs> really but sometimes you need to step away from that and do something completely diametrically opposed to the sca that has absolutely nothing to do with the sca or maybe instead of unplugging and doing sca you need to go go play video games for six months who knows right. maybe you need to read books for six months that have absolutely nothing to do about history yeah. you know maybe you need to write a book i mean you have options you don't have right. to do like real life first and self-care is part of real life first so if you're yes. burnt out take care of you you, you got to put on right. your own oxygen mask before you put on <laughs> the oxygen mask the person next to you yeah so that should be a part of our training you know as we transform people is is training them to know that right so when they're burning out training people to know how to be a guide so when they mm -hmm. get to those places when they need to be a guide um how to do that what that means what, how we want to grow people, how we want to transform people, all of those things need to be thought about for sure. Oh, and Sharon, who's also been playing for four decades, she agrees. Knowing that it's normal and even more okay to step away would have made her four decades way easier. And that's the thing. As a culture, we don't, I mean, the, the focus on what we realize definitely changes. And knowing that it's okay to step away now where you might not have thought of that 30 years ago, definitely okay now and it's well, being aware of that and it really puts the sca into perspective too you know like um definitely in swing we were getting to a place and i actually moved to hawaii for three months and we started a swing scene there but it was great to come back to the sca because you really do go oh yeah we're like a group of nerds who dress up in costumes and are in the park right like to <laughs> Joe Schmo in their pickup truck, we're all the same, you know, like whether mm -hmm. we're using foam swords or whether we're doing SCA. So it really it brings all that, like taking ourselves a little too seriously down to earth a little bit, right? Definitely. I think sometimes people can get really focused in the SCA. They're like crowned for several times and they just get like so serious and they really need that like six month vacation well, and really to play in some other groups to go, oh yeah. And the, oh, yeah. the nice thing about the SCA is you choose the level of engagement and involvement that you want to play at, at any given moment in time. And if you want to be super, super serious and dedicate all your free time and all your energy and all your resources to that, go for it. But if you don't want to, you just want to go and have fun at an event, you go and have fun at an event. Right. I'm not I mean, going to judge you for your level. And I would hope that nobody would judge me for my level, you know? Yeah. And remember okay. how to do that, right? Like, yeah. Um, I have other friends that they're both peers, you know, like when we first joined the SCA, you have your little mundane tent, five people in a Honda Accord. We're going to Australia, yeah. right? Like we spent Crammed less than a hundred dollars. Yeah. And it's just like, Hey, it's fun. Right. But then and it's really like um, uprising. I remember seeing somebody in their dually truck pulling out. There's two people in the truck and they have a full trailer mm -hmm. of all their stuff. And I remember people complaining like, you know, it's just so much. It's just so much to play the SCA. Mm -hmm. And it's like, well, you, you don't have to have a rope mm -hmm. bed at every event. You don't have to have 15 a pavilion. pavilion. Like, yeah. Being able to like scale yourself back down and get a hotel and bring a tunic, right? Like. Um, and so really 
thinking about that bar of entry too, as far as the story we're inviting people into, right? So I noticed this at our fighter practices a couple of years ago where new people would come in and we're like so excited to have them there. And so we're putting them into loaner armor and we're telling them, well, you just need a helmet and you need this and da, 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 da. And then they're starting to think, well, I don't have a thousand dollars for armor. And, and this is a lot mm-hmm. of time and energy. And it's like, oh no, really to join the SCA, you just need a tunic, right? Like, mm-hmm. And you can get that off of Amazon these days, right? Like, or we need borrow to make sure from we, Gold Key, right? Lower that that <laughs> story and that bar of entry to say, "Hey, this is this is fun. It's a great escape. You can come and hang out. Um, you can participate in lots of different things. And all you need to do is dress up a little bit." Right. We have a, a couple of good questions that just popped in. Um, Deidre uh, or Dee Dee, I'm not sure how you pronounce it because each person I with the same spelling of that name pronounces it differently. Do you ever cold call groups like the girl guides or invite them? Um, I know in my local area, we never cold called any group to kind of advertise who we were. Mm-hmm. Uh, we just made sure that we had a very public facing uh, kind of fighter practice and that anytime there was a function like a Ren Fair or um, something at our public library where we had an opportunity to volunteer we would volunteer to to serve at that library function or at that park festival so that we, we had a presence and so that they knew. And from there, groups like the Boy Scouts, the Girl Scouts, um, groups like elementary school teachers or history teachers, high school, junior high, they would reach out to us. And we made sure that we had our contact information on multiple platforms readily available. Like we had a website, we had Facebook, whatever we needed to have, we had flyers so that it was readily available for contact. Well, in Unterhofen, which is Northern Colorado, we have a great um, indoor site. So it's it's a field house for Colorado State University. It's their old field house. Um, so we reached out to Ampgar, Dagger, Bellegarth, um, and invited them all to our fighter practice. So there's nothing so like heartwarming to me than to walk into this giant field house and to see like it would bring 30, 40, 50 foam fighters, right? So there would be a whole section of fo- folks doing foam. We'd have all of our heavy weapons fighters. We'd have all of our rapier cut and thrust oh. fighters. So you would see just this whole place filled with folks sword fighting and having mm-hmm. fun, crossing over, um, sharing things. And so actually our newest knight, um, Sir Uhtred, came from Ampgard. He came from that group, right? And it isn't just the fighters in those groups. It's their mm-hmm. service people too who- And their artisans. Run artisans. They're all usually younger. So inviting them, why can't we have a track where there's fun, mm-hmm. right? Why, why can't we have art- ANS knights and they would love to come and learn you know, some of the stuff that we do in the SCA because we do it so well. So really, yeah, call those folks, ask them, invite them, say, we would love to have you. Um, We're thinking about doing something at a game night that has a night and doing a medieval night and inviting all the groups to come and participate and do crafts and dancing and, Mm -hmm. and the things that we do in the SCA. But then they realize that we're not just this aloof snobby group, but yeah, we're, we're all nerds. We're all together. Mm-hmm. We can share, you know, all of the things that we do. Well, and I know back in years past, you know, people, you could find SCA practices and events in newspapers. Mm-hmm. There's Facebook groups that are kind of for your local area that your group can advertise on as well saying, Hey, you know, we're having our weekly fighter practice at such and such day at such and such time at such and such park, you know, and our fighter practice mm-hmm. consists of, you know, armored rapier buffer, you know, youth fighter, you know, or arts and science. Like you can list all of that out and advertise. And usually those groups, it's kind of a free thing. If you want to do paid advertising, that's something that each group's financial committee, you know, would have to approve and follow whatever social media guidelines for your kingdom. Well, and going back to the story bonding, right? Like you can use that as your marketing, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're going, well, who are our heroes? Who are the interest groups that are interested? Mm -hmm. And what are they searching for? So what are their needs, right? Mm -hmm. And so one of the best things that we do in the SCA is it really is like Kingdom for Sale for me, like, or any of those books where somebody go, you go through the wardrobe, you go through Mm -hmm. the standing stones, right? And then you're in a different land. Mm -hmm. So 
people are like dealing with politics and work and all of the things that they deal with, right? We all know how that is. So being able to get in garb and go around the fire and talk with friends and, and be in an armor and all of those things are such a great escape, right? That's what we offer. Mm -hmm. That's our story in the SCA. Mm -hmm. So being able to market that way, right? So almost showing like somebody hanging out at their computer or whatever, right? And then showing them an armor, like on the field of battle or as an archer, right? Doing their thing. So mm -hmm. I actually liked when during the pandemic, they would show people in Monday or in their modern clothes and mm -hmm. then they would jump to their SCA. I thought that was great advertising because it shows like you mm -hmm. can go from here to here, right? And really mm -hmm. enjoy this group. Definitely. So another way to use story bonding as far as like, how do we focus our, our marketing? Mm -hmm. What is the story we're inviting people into, right? And Houghton just posted a good comment too, like COVID in its own way helped me by having so much more content available online. Uh, it's difficult for them to get to events, their wife lost their interest. So this allowed them to meet a lot of new people during that time. And that's something, you know, technology that wasn't really utilized, that was readily available pre-COVID, but now we can. And it, you know, mm -hmm. is definitely something that we try to integrate into whatever the future of the SCA looks like and make it still accessible so that you can right. still play. There's known world scribal symporium was just th this weekend. Right. <laughs> and you could participate online without having money. You know, I, I you don't have to pay for it. You gotta do it virtually. You don't have to drive or fly or get a hotel or camp. <laughs> you know right. So much more accessible for a lot of people. And yeah, people and, with and being intentional about how we use it, right? As far as like, okay, <laughs> we want to grow our members. We want engagement. We have these other tools that we've really got good at during the pandemic. How can we work these things into what we're doing so that people help people on their journey? So during the pandemic, I did video training with fighters. We're meeting right now to talk about retention, right? So thinking about how do we reach out and, and have more people be able, if they can attend, can they still watch and, are, and is it accessible and is it available and are we planning it as far as how we're doing what we're doing in our well, venture in the SCA? And, and for artisans, COVID and having the accessibility of, of art information classes online and, and kind of get togethers, kind of really helped the artisan's hero journey during COVID right. and quarantine. Like, I can't mm -hmm. tell you how many amazing new artisans, but like, well, I guess they're not new now, it's two years in, but you know, that, that suddenly these people show up at a practice that out of the blue and they're like, yeah, I've been following these. I took this class and this class and this class and I made this and it's like, oh my God, that's gorgeous. Right. And they can tell you the history behind all the techniques used. I mean, their hero's journey went from you know, day one online and they're right up there with people who are peers, like with some right. of their art. It, yeah. It's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, and we can tap into that way better. Um, just as an aside, it's interesting being a kingdom chatelaine. Um, so one of the things with the hero's journey is to always look at the SCA through the eyes of the hero. Right. Mm -hmm. So as a new person, if they go to your local website, can they understand the website at all? Are there any pictures? Is it, is it pleasing? Mm -hmm. One of the things you can really look at is when they list all the officers and one, they don't list what they're, what they actually do. So mm -hmm. nobody knows what a shadowing is, which is really weird. Right. Cause they're supposed to be the newcomer person, but then everybody <laughs> lists their SCA names and it's like, well, I don't know how to say that Viking name. So not only do I know, not know what they do, <laughs> but I don't know their, how to say their Viking name. So that's a big hurdle to jump over. Right. So are we, which is the very step, first step on that hero's journey for a lot of people, are we tailoring our websites, our social media for those new people mm -hmm. and inviting them into this story? So I know Aidenveld started to really think about that, right? And think about like, well, how can we even do this more like a video game or like a, a role-playing game, right? So welcome hero. Uh, what kind of path mm -hmm. are you interested in? Are you interested in arts and crafts or this or that? What's your name, right? Like, mm -hmm. and really starting to invite them into that, like you're going on an adventure. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of work that we can be doing as far as that hero's journey and story bonding 
with our social media, oh, with our websites. Definitely. Uh, just for example, a website that's so much more dynamic where you've got that name and that officer title, it takes two minutes to make a TikTok where it's a transition from, hi, I'm Gina in plain clothes. I quick jump, do a little edit, right. change my clothes, record the second half. No, I'm Excellency Ramut. You know, boom, right. two seconds. And I could literally embed that into the website. So when they clicked on that particular officer role and title and name, it not only says, you know, who I am, you know, but you have right. a face and, and, and how to pronounce the name with mm -hmm. the description of what a Chatelaine is. Right. Like, that's how easy. Not that I'm currently Chatelaine, FYI. <laughs> right. But yeah, for anything, right? So whether it's your local practices, whatever, I always, in my, in my modern life, I always try and use the view of that new person mm -hmm. or of the hero, even if they're not super new, like, mm -hmm. what does this look like? What does this mean? What's the story it's telling, right? If I walk mm -hmm. up, what does it look like? Who's coming to talk to me or not, right? Like, so I'm always trying to put myself into those eyes so then I can see what's going on and then change if need be, right? Like, oh, and, and say, oh, yeah, this, there's no pictures on this website, right? Like we need to like make that a little more inviting or is there even a portal for the new mm -hmm. people? And that should probably be the very first thing. And that's yeah. another thing where churches are way farther ahead than we are. On oh, they well, are, they're, 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 their welcoming committee is on point right. compared yeah, to- Yeah, they have people meeting you as you go in and here's a card to fill out. And you're in the, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're like doing things way better. Um, and, and a lot of their stuff is free. A lot of their technology mm -hmm. is free. We can totally pull from what they're doing, um, but they're a little bit farther ahead than the NCA is. Definitely. Uh, looks like we have a question here. Uh, Wild and Free Costumery says, any tips for introducing the SCA to non-SCA parents of kiddos who really want to come? Mm. So obviously we can use that whole story bonding for the hero to be the, the, the kiddo who wants to come. I right. think using that and explaining that process to the parent and explaining, you know, who we are and what we do and the things that you can get by participating in a nonprofit SCA definitely are huge selling points. Right. And so, yeah, looking at who are the heroes in those situations, right? So we have kids, mm -hmm. Um, there's a war practice today and my 11 year old daughter's like, well, I want to go to war practice. I want to fight in war practice, right? Cause she wants to be a part. We have a bunch of buffer weapons. So mm -hmm. we can totally say, Hey, she wants to participate, right? Let's mm -hmm. do a little bit of melees with the kids. Um, so what are her goals? But then the parents are a different hero, right? So what are mm -hmm. their needs? What are their, they're looking for some sort of engagement. They've been sending their kid to karate that's $120 a month, right? Mm -hmm. Is this safe? What is this about? So once we can kind of really look at like who they are as heroes and what their needs are, then we can go, oh, they're looking to make sure that we're safe, that we're educational, that we're mm -hmm. interesting. And I have found over the years that sometimes the parents stay longer than the kids. You know, like the kids kind of go off and do their thing eventually, and the parents mm -hmm. are still playing SCA because they found their place mm -hmm. in this. Definitely. Oh, perfect. Ooh, Cal. Yes. Give that question to Izzy. She will love that. And her guests as well. Um, it looks like we're getting to our end of our hour here, uh, Sir Alexander. Um, at the end of the show, I like to do a shout out. Um, but before I do that, can I ask if you would be willing potentially to come back again? in a couple yeah. months maybe? Of and course. we could deal into this a little bit more because this really is a really good topic and there's a lot of strategies and just from the get the comments from our viewers like there's a lot of information and it definitely is applicable to all groups in the sca yeah and so i have that little one pager that i showed but i've definitely written like a whole section on how to use each of those things so people can read those i send it to, to you for free um or we can do it through the show um for sure Perfect. i would love to come back all right. Yeah, All right. I'll, do, I'll do a little shout, shout out to my kingdom deputy chatelaines and chatelaines that helped put together that hero's quest, especially Lord Ilo, um, the southern deputy, because I think that's just, it just is a different way to think about how do we engage people and get people going in the SCA that's a lot more fun, 
that they're going to grow in a lot of different ways versus just setting them information that is kind of boring and doesn't make sense. So um, a shout out to them for putting together that um, newcomers heroes quest. So it's a, it's hopefully going to be a great tool for people to use. Definitely. Perfect. Um, my shout out, and I've already done a shout out to this individual, but I have to do another one because they've, they've helped me. Um, I, my shout out is to, um, uh, Maestra Fiametta. Um, everybody knows Fia. Fia says, uh, SCA Storytime on TikTok, Fia. Um, she has definitely been amazing. She's, uh, been reaching out to me and helping, um, kind of refocus and re-engage me. Uh, within mm -hmm. my my path uh, in mm -hmm. arts and science, she, she's being my my quest giver, my mentor. Right, yeah, yeah you're in story bonding. So my shout out today is to her because she's amazing. <laughs> All right, um, coming up on Calvert's Corner, we have on Monday the twenty fifth tomorrow with uh, their Excellency. Or to me, didn't mean to promote you, Izzy. My, she's actually my sister ship, <laughs> Izzy, um, on Look Inside Youth Activities. She has Duchess Tiana, who is amazing. And youth guilds is definitely something that everybody's going to want to learn about, especially when it comes to engaging our youth. Um, then we have on 728 on Ask a Night, the 50th episode of Ask a Night's Live. It's gonna be amazing. And they have a special guest host I hear. Um, I think it might be somebody that you guys know. It's not me, but it is somebody you know. Uh, and then of course, uh, looks like on Coffee with Cal on 731, we have Mercenary Culture with Sir Neil Greenstone. Cal is going to have a heck of a show. So you definitely want to tune in and watch that. Now, if you love the shows that are on Cal Bard's Corner and you want to support Cal Bard's Corner, you can definitely, if you feel free and have the means and availability, support us via Patreon at patreon.com forward slash KK Productions. Or, you know, if maybe you don't want to, you know, wind up on that wall of fame, but you want some really cool stickers or some pillowcases or sheets, you can go onto Redbubble and search KK Productions and get a sticker or sheets or whatever coffee cup you so desire. And then of course, if you wanna see what Cal's up to, you can find Cal at TikTok at Cal Barter. Or if you wanna see what I'm up to, although I haven't posted quite often, you can find me at Gina Kitts. And if you ever have any questions or concerns, feel free to go ahead and hook us up with a, a message. We will answer them. I want to say thank you once again, Sir Alexander. I can't wait to have you back on. You <laughs> definitely you gave my brain a lot of information, and it's going to be interesting, all the conversations that are going to spur off from our discussion tonight. So cool. thank you. Yeah, thanks for having me. <laughs> Good night, everybody.